Good afternoon, good evening, hello, wherever you're at, may the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I want to reveal something with the spiritual truth. Everything we do here, we do with a prayer. So Father, powerful and ever-living God, I come to you right now in your presence to talk to you and to reveal the spiritual truth of the Holy Spirit that is in me and that will teach me the truth to teach humanity in, in the name of Jesus. Someone asked me, why are these videos so important? Because the videos are not for today. No. The day the rapture is coming close, the day the Antichrist starts showing up into the world, people will run to YouTube to look up things. And these videos will be evidence of the Lord Jesus Christ preparing the people in the future. This is the reason why the videos are being made in the name of Jesus. It's a powerful spiritual truth. I am just an instrument of God, just like um, Mark, Luke, Matthew, and John, when they wrote the scriptures, they left all the scriptures ready for my generation 2,000 years later. That's the way God is working. So now these videos and technology are going to be used. So in the future, like three years from now, the Antichrist comes and all of a sudden everybody's like, oh my God, what is that? What does this mean? Everybody's going to go to YouTube and going to be like Antichrist or uh, search for different things. What do they mean? Well, God is talking through the Holy Spirit now. So he's helping the generation to the future. Or the people in tomorrow, the next week, the thing, anybody. God has a powerful plan. This is not about fame. This is not about having a million likes. I don't care. I'm only here to save your soul in the name of Jesus. That is my job. And that is what God called me in this world to do. So we'll continue with the prayer. God, Heavenly Father, let your spiritual eyes open up. Let their spiritual hearts open and understand the word of God that you want them to give. In the name of Jesus, amen. You can bring me the Bible if you want, please. So today I wanted to talk to you really important. It's, I found out how to receive the Holy Spirit. I received the Holy Spirit before, but I want to tell you in um, how, how, what is the process for receiving the Holy Spirit. See, everybody that comes from the world, see, the world is a great place. The world has drinking, smoking, partying, everything, You living, uh, spending money, having money. Everybody in the world works and they all want to do a lottery. All of them want to do the lottery. I want to win the lottery so I can become rich. I want to do the lottery so I can quit my job. See, that's all jobs. But there's a bigger lottery than that. It's the gift of salvation that Jesus Christ gives us. See, that's everlasting life. That's not dying. That is living forever. That is in the kingdom of God eternal life so when we want to win the money in this world we want to win the money for now but when you die you don't take the money when you die you're dead if you are not saved by Christ you go to hell it's just like that see three ways to enter the kingdom of God is this you need to be born again like the Bible says to enter the kingdom of God you need to be a child so how you say how do you be born again well it's very simple when you're living in the world and not caring about God and going out and going to job and coming back and paying bills and having fun and doing all these beautiful things that you do in the world, there's no presence of God in your heart. You're dead. You're empty. You're an empty vessel. So what you need when you um, be born again, you need to give up all your desires. Now, that doesn't mean have a house and sell your house and give everything. No, it's not like that. There's a spiritual truth to it. So let's just say you like to drink. You stop drinking. Say you like to smoke. You stop smoking. Say you like to go find women in clubs and everything and underage or whatever. You have to stop. Say you like to lie. You have to stop. Say you want to steal from people. You have to stop. See, God wants you to put an end of your old life because he's trying to give you a new life so when God works this is the way God works it's very spiritual and very true he wants you to submit to him he means surrender to him have you ever heard songs like I surrender I surrender everything I surrender my mind my heart my soul the reason why he wants you to surrender is because God wants to take control of your life God loves you so much that he he sent his son into the world to die for us that's true love man that's love no one else would die for you would your mom die for you would your aunt die for you for your cousin your brother your sister your girlfriend your wife your husband would they die for you no so God is an amazing God God is a powerful God God is a God of love everybody says it but God is also a fire of consumer 
See, the word of God says that God is a double-edged sword. What double-edged sword means that he will speak the word and he will punish you at the same time in the name of Jesus. See, God is a consumer of fire in the name of Jesus. So, when you submit to God, in other words, you're submitting to God. And why are you submitting to God? Because you're saying, God, I'm tired of this world. I want to give up everything. I want to follow you. I want to know what the truth is. And also, you know how you get, you get high, you get drunk, you do all these kind of things, and then you also want to get this high feeling and want to feel nice? Well, God is better. The Holy Spirit gives you a peace that no desire can offer you. The devil can offer you money, diamonds, ricks, fame, everything. Like in the Word of God, it says in um, Matthew chapter 4 when uh, Jesus was tempted by Satan. He says, I offer you all the kingdoms of the world. All you have to do is bow down to me. And then he says, thou shalt not tempt thy the Lord thy God. Worship the Lord Jesus Christ thy God. Okay? So God is trying to say... These desires and everything in the world is the devil's. It's not God's. See, people say, no, the money is God. No, it's not. See, the word of God also says in Timothy uh, chapter 5, it says not to worship the money. You have to worship, not, not to worship the money, not to love money. It's the same thing. Loving money, worshiping money, it's all the same. See, our biggest problem in this world is we all want to be rich. We all want to have fame. We all want to succeed. We go to school. We try to have better careers. Um, we steal from others. We want to do better. There's different ways. But there's only one biblical way in the name of Jesus. And it's like this. To enter the kingdom of God, you need to be humble. God is not going to take a rich pride person. Mm -mm. Rich pride person comes from the devil. Oh, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a Catholic and I believe in God and I have faith and everything. No, that's not called faith. That's called faith of you, what you believe. But faith in the Bible says, faith without actions is dead. So if you have faith, you can have faith in everything. I have a faith in a car. I have faith in my brother. I have faith in everything. But if you don't have a foundation or something strong to believe in the name of Jesus, you are just dead. See, when you have faith in God, you, you want to thank God. You want to worship God. You want to glorify God. You want to say, God, thank you for my life. Thank you for my son, my, my daughter, my family, my kids, my job, everything. You want to thank Him from your heart. When you thank God, you're, you're showing gratitude. When you, um, when you fear God, there's another one. Back in the day in the Old Testament, people used to be fearing God. And they're saying, oh, what, what does fearing God mean? Fearing God is, means you respect God. He is all king, all powerful, and forever. When you respect God, your life changes. If you don't believe in God like, oh, you just want to have him like a friend, you can have him. But it's better to respect him, love him, understand him, glorify him, praise him, every single thing. So I'm going to teach you today how to receive the Holy Spirit. See, I'm going on and on, but here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to the point. When you receive the Holy Spirit, the first way is you need to separate from the earth. You need to separate of the world desires. So how you say, how do I separate? Okay. So first of all, you remember Jesus Christ when he was in the garden before he died. He cried and his, his uh, tears became blood. Meaning he cried so much. So Jesus is teaching us to get to the Father. We need to cry. We need to cry our problems out. We need to cry our struggles, our sufferings. Every single thing we have, we let it out. We don't do it in public. We do it private. The Word of God says when you pray in private, God will give you things in public in the name of Jesus. Okay, so when we give up the world, when we give up the desires, now how do we stay strong? How do we stay strong not to give him back into the devil or temptation? Well, there's one easy way. It's not an easy way. Jesus Christ in Matthew 4, he was, he, when he went, before he started his ministry, he was fasting. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, just like Noah, 40 days, 40 nights, okay? See, everything is biblical consonants. So what happened? He was so weak, he was hungry, that Satan came up to him and tempted him. And he says, turn these stones into bread. But anyway, the point that I wanted to realize is not what Satan did, no. I wanted to tell you what God did. He fasted. See, when you fast, it's praying and reading the Bible. When you fast, you give in your, your flesh. There's a scripture in the name of Jesus that I want to read to you, but in my head right now, I, I'm trying to remember it. But obviously my friend has a different type of Bible, 
and it's not going to be the same, but um, in the name of Jesus, we'll see what the Holy Spirit finds for me. Uh -huh. uh, wish I had my Bible, which has all the, the things already written and everything, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, it was a very beautiful teaching. It says once you submit flesh, flesh and, and spirit can't go together. Oh my goodness, I'm trying to remember it. Nah, maybe I have to read and read it. Anyways, so the this, this scripture was flesh is against spirit and spirit's against flesh. So when you're saying flesh, what is flesh? Your, your flesh. Your flesh. Desire. Sex. Drinking. Smoking. Eating. All these things are desires that we have. So God says to submit your flesh, meaning to destroy it. So when we fast and pray and we read the Bible, we are basically not eating. And we're not eating, we're making a sacrifice. And that sacrifice is where instead of thinking of eating, instead of thinking about stuff, we're praying. We're learning the Word of God. We're getting closer to God. This is the way we get closer to God. And what happens with this moment is this. In this moment, you can humiliate in front of God because all your insights come out. At the same time, it strengthens your spirit because by the time you give in flesh, the spirit starts getting stronger. You start praying the word of God. You start saying, glorify, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, thank you, glory, whatever it is. That's the spirit spoken. Those are words of the spirit coming out. And the reason why you're speaking these words is because you're thanking God. Even though you're hungry, even though you're starving and you want to eat something, you don't put your mind into it. You put your mind in God. You put your mind in Jesus Christ. You put your mind in the Holy Spirit. You, you learn all the teachings that God gives you. It's very important because once we humiliate and submit in fasting, the beautiful part comes up that the Spirit of God comes over us. And if we are having a miserable day, sad, angry, jealous, um, any kind of feeling, it goes away and it comes this peace. You feel harmony. See, this is the peace when you smoke and you drink and you want that peace because you want that relaxation. This is the peace of the Holy Spirit. This is, the, this is what the world calls a nirvana. This is a nirvana of the Holy Spirit which is peacing you out. It's harmony. It's harmonizing you. So what's happening with this? God wants you to relax. God is helping you out. He's teaching you. He, he's, he's working with you. Sometimes um, you receive the Holy Spirit in this way. Or sometimes you receive in another way the Holy Spirit is when you start singing. So if singing it could be like this, Mina. I, I, I am a, a Christian rapper in the name of Jesus and I preach the word. So I can give you something here in the Holy Spirit. Ready? My God, He's an awesome God. He reigns. Okay, okay. Anyways, we'll do it like this. My Lord Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. I need anybody else in this world without can. Boys or girls, and they need to go all come for no suffering. The Lord Jesus Christ has the word of God. He separates and saves me from all the holy misery. This ain't gonna come down. It's not gonna be history. Jesus Christ is the only word I need because the Holy Spirit blows in me because the suffering of the pain that I need to receive. I don't need no temptations from the world and lead. I can only come out here. I don't need to smoke and weed because Jesus Christ is the one that I need to read because the Lord Jesus Christ comes in my mind and my heart and my soul and I give it all to Him because this is the the Lord Jesus Christ coming in me, I bow down to him from the King of Kings. So sometimes when you receive it, you can either rap, you can either sing, or you could just glorify. You say, hallelujah, praise the Lord, Jesus Christ. See, all those things, are you're not doing this for people to see you. You're doing this for your soul. You Do you want eternal life? If you want eternal life, you need to do these things. You need to humiliate yourself. So you, it's like humiliating yourself is saying sorry to God. So you know how Catholics go to a confession and ask for their sins to the priest? Well, we don't need to do that. We do it the right way, which our priest is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we submit to God in the name of Jesus. We go straight to God in the name of Jesus. And they, when you're a Catholic, you try to submit, but you can't. Oh, no, 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 no. The Word of God says Jesus Christ is the mediator of all men in Second Timothy in the name of Jesus. What you need to know is when you submit, you humiliate yourself. You start fasting. You start praying. And then here comes the great part because you're feeling all good inside. You want to say thank you. You want to say thank you for your life. You want to say thank you for everything that happened in your life. And you want to know you're very grateful to God. You, you're happy that God has changed your life. That you're not living in the world. That you're not um, doing drugs and, uh, and asking people for money. Like you, you're totally changed. See, that's what God does. God creates a new creation in you. You become a new man in the name of Jesus. So when you become a new man, you leave the old man. You basically bury the old man in the, in the bottom of the ocean. 
because you submitted to God. So this is the way you enter to God's kingdom. So now, the receive of the Holy Spirit. How do you receive the Holy Spirit? So when you sing, and you sing, and you sing, and you sing, and you sing, but you sing with your heart. And when you pray, you pray from your heart. When you do it, you don't do it for people to hear you. You don't do it for they can like it. You don't do it because, oh, I'm embarrassed. People can see me. You don't do it for them. You do it for God. You're trying to impress God. You're not trying to impress the world. You're not from the world no more. See, that's when you have to understand. When you submit yourself to God, the world goes away. You and God are the same thing. It's not religion. It's called the relationship. God is your friend. You speak to Him. You say, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for another day. Your love. You consume me. Thank you for me going to work. Everything. Everything. You go to work. You wake up in the morning. You ask for your food. You do everything. It's like God is now in your authority. You have to give authority to God over your life. Because God loves you so much that He's going to save you. And then He's going to give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You find the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It talks about five gifts. Speaking in tongue. Interpretation of the tongue, healing, preaching, and uh, rebuking. Well, rebuking is more in uh, Ephesians. But that's what comes out. I have the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. I'm going to show you. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, King of Kings. The glory in the Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings, forever almighty to be with everybody. I am telling everybody and showing you the spiritual gift. And I don't worship the devil and I don't worship Bezabel or Saint in Lucifer. I don't. I worship the Lord Jesus Christ, my rock of salvation, my Yo Jehovah, Yahweh, my Father, God, 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 my Creator, the Creator of the world, the Savior of the world, in the name of Jesus. And His name is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Alpha, the Omega, the King of Kings, the beginning, not the end, the, the Messiah, the Lord, the God, everything. The Lord of Lords. Okay. Anyways, um, I wanted to show you something. So anyways, we were going back to it. So to be, then you need to figure out, you want to say, I want to be saved in this rapture. This rapture, what is this? This rapture is when God comes back for the people chosen by God. How you get chosen? Because you, you do what you have to do. So you read the Bible. You read the scriptures. And you read the most important scripture, which is the Holy Spirit. So you start believing in the Holy Spirit. You start believing in the teachings of the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, the Spirit starts working in you. And one day, you might be singing a song. Sometimes you're worshiping. All of a sudden, you're feeling shake and all shake. And you're feeling cold chills. And you don't know what's going on. And you're feeling electricity all over you that you can't even hold. And all of a sudden, you're trying to control. And all of a sudden, it knocks you on the floor. And you wake up with a peace. The Holy Spirit touched you. When the Holy Spirit touches you, little by little, the Holy Spirit is now in you. Remember, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's what it says in the Bible. Does that mean that your house is a temple of the Spirit? So if there's people that have um, tattoos, uh, piercings, and everything, and they did that to their body, they don't, care about their, they don't care about the temple of the Holy Spirit. See, people think just because you have tattoos, you can receive the Word of God. You cannot. You need to clean yourself. You need to be holy. You need to be presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the world is teaching some kind of belief. They're teaching that um, here in America, there's uh, gays who have Jesus Christ and there's a gay flag and everything. Jesus is not gay. Jesus never had a woman because his purpose wasn't to come in the world to have a woman like us. No. His purpose was to die so he can destroy death. For we can have the blood of Jesus Christ to be saved in the name of Jesus. See, God's life and God's world, that's all His business. We shouldn't be curious and to know what He did. Because if we are, we are tempting thy God. We are doubting God. We need to know what the Bible says and stick with the Bible and stop making assumptions. And all of a sudden, they're picking up new scriptures in the History Channel. And we're seeing the scriptures of Judas, the scriptures of Thomas, and all these kind of stuff. How do you know those scriptures are from God? How do you know they're not scriptures from the devil? How do you know the devil didn't plant those out? Maybe he could have planned that out just to trick the world. You have to understand. When you believe in the Holy Spirit, there's a scripture in uh, 1 John 2.27. It says you receive the Holy Spirit and he tells you the truth. No one else can teach you the truth. You learn the truth through him in the name of Jesus. 
That's how I learned the Word of God. I have the Holy Spirit. And I love the Holy Spirit. And I will become a leader and a preacher in the name of Jesus all over the world. In Spanish, because I speak Spanish, and also in English. And if I have to speak in Arabic, I speak in Arabic too, because that's the power of the Holy Spirit. See, the power of the Holy Spirit can make anybody speak to anybody. See, all you have to do is trust God. Trust God with all your heart. So let's get back to the point where we're saying. When you humiliate yourself and you start fasting and you start glorifying God, you start changing a different man. You start being who you are. You're not the same person. You're not looking at pornography. Excuse me. The reason I say pornography a lot because that's a, a biggest thing here for the world, for men, for women, everything. Pornography is the number one sin that Satan takes people straight to hell. So you're you're leaving you're not you're not in your own life. You're not gonna sell drugs. You're not gonna buy drugs. You're not going to get drunk. You're not gonna do other stuff. Like you could drink wine to a certain position where you like, oh, I feel tipsy. That's it. Because if you keep going, you don't know what the consequences are. You can end up sleeping with someone else, it's not your wife or something. All of a sudden you committed adultery. Just like that. Or you can go in vandalism and destroy something and all the way you're, you're destroying private property and going to jail. So you have no idea. What controls you when you're drinking is not God no more. You're opening a door for the demonic demons that do live in this world. And I'm going to go to a scripture that's very important that I remember now that God is um, talking to me about it right now in my head. I'm going to go to Hebrews 11.6. It's a very powerful scripture. It says... And without faith, it is impossible to please God. He who comes to God must believe, and he is, and he is rewarded and seek by, by him. What does that mean? If you don't have faith in God, you don't have faith. You see how God sometimes talks to you? This is what I was talking about, the Spirit. All of a sudden, I'm talking to you, and God gives you a scripture in your mind. Sometimes you memorize it, sometimes you don't. But this is the way the Lord Jesus Christ works. I wanted to find, um, oh, I, I remember, it's in Corinthians, it's in chapter 6. It talks about the armor of God, and I want to read this in English, because in English it's the most powerful way that you can understand the Word of God, in the name of Jesus. No, 6, 9, oh, we could read scriptures, 6, 9. 6, 9 says, uh, Or do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, or adulterers, or not effeminates, or nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor abusers, nor drunkards, nor revers, nor swingers, nor inherit the kingdom of God. That was in the scripture I want, but as I'm reading it, the Holy Spirit saw it and said, say it. And this is what I was talking about, the power of the Holy Spirit. He just, he just starts moving you. I'm trying to find the armor of God. I'm trying to say, is it Corinthians? Um, hmm. Can't remember the top of my head. Put on the armor of God. See, this Bible is a Protestant Bible, King James, but it has no titles. But um, maybe next time I'll make a video about that in the name of Jesus. So we'll continue. In the word of God, really means clearly is this. When you submit yourself to God, you, you basically separate yourself from the world. That's what calls separate from the world. Second, you fast, you basically give up your worldly desires. When you continue to the next process, you're praising God, you're exalting His name. You're calling Him God above everything, in the name of Jesus. So when you do that, you start changing. Your, your, your personality changes, you think different, you, want, you either want to find more stuff about the Bible, you get this hunger. This hunger is a spiritual hunger that makes you want to keep looking for God and say who He is, where is He at, oh I can't read the Bible, let me go look at YouTube, let me listen to a video. You, you, you're, you're in a different world. You become like you want to be a researcher. You become a researcher finding God and you want to find everything about God because you fell in love with God. That is called the love of God in the name of Jesus. So as, as the more your life continues and the more you praise and the more you give time and the more you pray and the more you understand and the more you grow and the more you learn in the name of Jesus, there's a moment when the Holy Spirit touches you. Now when you receive the Holy Spirit, we'll go to that book. It's Ephesians chapter 1 in the name of Jesus. Ephesians is in the back. And Ephesians is a book that um, is the episode of the Ephesians by St. Paul which is uh, the guy who wrote in the back. Okay, ready? In the name of Jesus. 
See, once you receive the Holy Spirit, now here comes the truth for you guys. In Him, you also listening to, okay. In Him means in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, you are listening oh, to the message of truth. And the gospel of salvation. And having received it, you receive the seal of the Holy Spirit. See, that's how it is. You don't see it. It's such a spiritual thing that by believing in the Holy Spirit. And understanding who the Holy Spirit is. And understanding Jesus Christ and our God the Father. And understanding the Bible, you're safe. Till the day of rapture, you're not here. So now let's go to 1 John 2.27. The one that says you receive the Holy Spirit of truth. And I will leave off with that. Because... That's what God wants me to talk to you guys about tonight. Other chapters, it's whatever God wants. In the name of Jesus, uh, okay. And for you, and, and as for you, the anointed one, which is the Holy Spirit, which you receive from Him, which you receive from God, abides in you. And you have no need to anyone to teach you, but His anointing teaches you. In the name of Jesus. About all things and that is true. And it's not a lie. And just as he taught you, he binds with you. Meaning when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive him. He's there with you forever. Now you have to be careful what you do. Try not to get tempted by de the devil. Try not to go into the world. The Spirit's going to help you, but you have to help. You have to claim God. You have to ask God. One of the things that I've learned in the name of Jesus is to, to cover the blood of, say, every time you pray or anything or rebuke demons, you say, I bless my, I, I, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus Christ, meaning it's a protection. It's a protection from the enemy because when you start praying, the enemy wants to bother you. He wants to do distractions, wants to check your cell phone. Your kids might be yelling. You don't know what's going on. And all that is not part of God. That is the distraction for you not to understand the Word of God. And sometimes you understand the Word of God, but you get distracted. Then you get frustrated. Then you get angry. Then the demonic spirits come in and start attacking you. So you attack your family. See, that's all part of the enemy. And then once the enemy does that, he sits back and laughs and says, <laughs> I got him. Because you are now with God. By you being with God, the devil's going to come after you so fast now. More than what you thought. He's going to try to scare you in dreams. He's going to try to give you thoughts. He's going to try to do different things. You're going to hear his voice. You're going to think that it's God talking to you, but it's not. If anything that's negative and it's offending God, it's not from God. If anything that comes with love and peace, it's from God in the name of Jesus. Those are the spirits of the Holy Spirit. It's love, joy, peace, harmony, proper domine, and um, fertility, and... Um, I forgot what the other one was. Courage. In the name of Jesus. Everything comes from God. So when you have these things, you can go against the devil. Yeah. By praying. See, the way we destroy the devil is by praying and rebuking. So submitting to the Holy Spirit, in other words, is you humiliated yourself. You started fasting. You started praying. You started changing your life. You start praising God. You start glorifying God. And once you glorify God, then you just became a new person. That means your dead, your your old, your old self is dead. All your old sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. So what happens next? Well, here's a good thing. Once you know the Holy Spirit, you're safe. Then the Word of God says we need to love each other. So how do we love each other? We spread the Word of God to someone else. So what you learn and you know the truth, now you tell your neighbor. You tell your family, your brothers, your sisters, your mom, your aunt. You teach everybody because you want everybody to be safe. You really don't want people to stay in this earth and be destroyed by the Antichrist, by the devil, and all his lies. You want people to come, when God comes from the rapture, you'll be saved. He's like, oh, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I got to pack my bags in the name of Jesus. I'm gone. God is preparing everybody during the coronavirus and the spiritual truth to understand the word of God. Because this is the time that God has made with the coronavirus so people submit back to God, to pray God, to look for him. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for the word of God. Thank you for the spirit and everything that was revealed through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you for you, almighty God, King of kings. Glory to you, Lord God, heavenly King, almighty Father. Thank you for our day. Thank you for opening our spiritual hearts, our spiritual eyes, that we may see the glory of God and that we may be saved in the name of Jesus by the rapture in the name of Jesus, that we would have the seal of the Holy Spirit so we are saved in the name of Jesus and become new creations and separate from the world by the blood of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a good night, guys. God bless you.